I'm ready. <laughs> I'm starting. I'm starting to overheat. <laughs> is really steaming. Hey, it's Amy, and welcome to my channel, a place where I combine both my love for music and for running. In today's video, I'm sharing my top tips for winter running. Winter running doesn't have to be awful and terrible. It's just about having the right layers and the right equipment so you can just go on your run and not worry. I run all year long, and I think there's a huge value in running through the winter. And since we don't have access to a treadmill, this is our only option is to go outside. Feel free to check me out on Instagram at amy.spurkapney where I post more running and music-related things. So let's talk about my tips for staying safe, warm and dry on your winter runs. Base layers, I'm all about those layers. The first thing we're gonna talk about is just kind of inside to the outside of what you should wear, and then talk about shoes and just other tips at the end. I'm also going to do a blog post about exactly what I would wear in certain weather. So feel free to check that out later. I'll have a link in my description below. In regards to a base layer, you wanna make sure you have something that's thin, a technical fabric, and will wick away the moisture and sweat that happens on your run. I have a few options. I have the Under Armour Heat Tech. It's almost like compression material, and it's just close to my skin, and it's kind of just like this layer of protection. It's still breathable, which is super important as you don't want to retain all the sweat and kind of moisture in your clothes, which can result in you getting chilled and also maybe getting sick as well. I also like the base layer that has like the thumb hole, so it kind of keeps it in place. Let's show you that, like that. <laughs> I also have like kind of like a shorter sleeve for days that you just need like a little thin layer. One material you want to avoid for a base layer is cotton. Cotton retains water and doesn't dry very quickly, which is just not what you want on your run. Synthetic fabrics like nylon and polyester are sometimes called hydrophobic, which they resist water, so they won't retain it against your skin, which is a good thing. Merino wool is also just like the holy grail of base layers. Not only is it odor resistant and warm, it allows the moisture to kind of get carried away in these small openings in the fabric. Again, it's so important to have a base layer that uses technical fabric and won't retain moisture. half sip. As you can see, I have several of them and I just love my half sips. I highly recommend putting one of these over your base layer, especially on a colder day. These are so great as you can start your run with them zipped up as it might be a little cold and as the run goes along and you warm up, you can unzip it and let the heat escape. This way you don't overheat. Not all my half zips are the same kind of material or thickness, so some are thinner and this one is very thick and keeps you really warm. So again, you can get different kinds uh, for depending on the weather. Most of these have a thumb hole, which I just think is pretty ingenious. Even in regards to the half zip, having a technical fabric is also important because, again, you don't want to kind of suffocate yourself of warmth and overheat. You just want breathable but still warm material. So maybe your gym hoodie that you've had from high school might not be the best option. Though, around the house, I'm sure it's perfectly fine. The jacket. I personally only own a fall, spring jacket that's waterproof and wind resistant. This way my jacket's a little more versatile because I can wear it in the spring and fall and also the winter. It just depends on what you layer underneath it. The main things to look for your odor shell is something that's wind resistant and water resistant if you can. The wind can be super chilling in the winter so it's important to have something that blocks the wind but still breathable. Another thing that I love about this jacket, I don't know if you can tell, but all these lines are reflective. So this really helps with visibility especially if I'm running at night or in the morning morning when it's still dark outside. Some jackets come with a hood and I don't always use it but sometimes it's just nice to have something that goes over your head and you probably even put your hat over it if you really want to. It's a bit... or your bottom half. As the weather gets colder, my kind of length of my pants go a little longer and longer. So I go from shorts to kind of knee length to capris and then the full tight. These are actually seven eighths, but my legs are so short that they actually work out to be full length pants. 
These are what I would call spring or fall tights as they're not lined. It's just good to have something that covers your skin, especially on a kind of a nippy morning or evening, but it's not super cold out either. When the weather starts to drop below zero, I pull out my winter tights. These are New Balance tights and they're great as they have a zippered pocket and a pocket on the side so you can put gels or anything else, maybe your phone as well. What I love about them is that they're fleece lined. I honestly ran in them all last winter and there's maybe one or two days that I, I ended up wearing, and I'm gonna talk about this in a second, an extra layer over or under them, but these kept me super warm. As I just mentioned, when it gets so cold and the wind is really biting especially, you can kind of put an extra layer or like a track pant or a wind pant over your winter tights. Adding this track or wind pant over your winter tights can be a good idea, especially if it's really, really cold and windy and it just helps block the wind and keeps you a little warmer. You don't want to add too many layers as it can be difficult to move, so I mostly just wear these winter tights. These are also really nice as they have a bit of reflective material in them too. Another idea is if you have room under your tights, you can also add a layer of your spring or fall tights underneath them. I don't own one personally, but I have friends who do and love them, and it's called the Bun Toaster by Segoy. It's basically like underwear that goes underneath your tight that keeps your buns warm through the winter. I don't know about you, but I've come home sometimes with red legs and it might be nice to have something that kind of prevents that. Winter running shoes. Winter running shoes can be a good idea for several reasons. First off, they're waterproof so your feet don't get wet and soggy on your run. They also have a little more traction on the bottom of the shoes, which helps with snowy days or just a little slippery and they haven't plowed the sidewalks. And just a really good idea, these have a storm tread wet traction rubber. There's nothing worse than stepping in a puddle on the beginning of your run and just having heavy, soggy, wet, cold feet on your entire run. These are just perfect for rainy, snowy, wet days outside. One nice thing about winter running shoes is that they'll last a little bit longer as you won't wear them all year long. This way you can have them for several seasons and not just one. It's perfectly fine not to buy a pair of winter running shoes. You just have to make sure that the shoes that you run in have a little traction on them, they're not just flat like some of my other shoes are and that you just make sure that you put a merino or a warm wool sock in so your feet stay warm. They won't be waterproof but at least your feet will be warm in your socks. Which brings me to winter running socks. Having tall merino wool socks in the winter is key. They're thin, breathable, and keeps your feet warm. I also really like having the tall ones as it covers my ankles so there's no exposed skin. Sometimes winter socks can be a little thicker, so make sure that the shoes that you wear them with aren't too snug or else you might get some blisters. The nice thing about these Stance Merino wool socks is that you probably can get a couple runs out of them as they again have odor resistant and they're breathable so you don't have to wash them every time you run in them. This also helps with their lifespan and lasts a little bit longer as you don't wash them all the time. I highly recommend getting a tall sock that's in a technical material like Merino wool is the best I find and that's breathable and keeps your feet warm. Running mittens and gloves. Maybe just because I'm a violinist, I'm really sensitive to not having cold hands. I love my Solomon mittens, and I ran all last winter in them, and they just keep your hands so warm. They block the wind, and they have this thin slate insulation, 150 grams, and again, it's just, you can kind of, I'll show you a little close up, but they're insulated, so warm, and I ran, I love them. For days that are not super cold, it's still important to have something that covers your fingers to keep them warm. So I have these gloves from the last year's Tannenbaum race, but you can get gloves from Dollarama, like little thin ones like this, and you can layer them underneath gloves if you really want. I also have these gloves which are lined and have these little grippies so you can use your phone, but I don't find them as super warm as these. So it's just kind of like I would wear maybe these, then these, or maybe these with these underneath them, and then these ones. I mentioned the buff already in my Christmas gift video, but I love having this and just it's so great not to have any exposed skin, especially on your neck. This one is the winter polar buff version, which you can see is lined and really soft and really warm. It's breathable yet blocks the wind. I also have thinner versions, which I like to wear right now when it's just above zero, just to block the wind and also can use it kind of over your nose uh, if it's a super nippy day, but this is kind of the fall version and then this is the winter version. You can also put it above your nose and mouth and then put the hat over top of it so it stays in place, like this.
a hat, beanie, or headband. You lose a lot of heat through your head, so it's really important to keep your head covered, especially on those cold winter days. I like to wear my headband on days that it's just a little brisk outside, and I want my ears covered, but I also don't want a super thick toque like this on. I've also seen runners wear their normal summer hat in the winter with their headband over top of it so their ears are covered, but they still have a hat on top. I've yet to try this, but I think it's a really cool idea. When choosing a hat to wear, it's important to have one that has a technical material, again, like merino wool, or the synthetic materials that just allow you to breathe and the sweat to escape, but also keeps you warm. I like wearing this one on the cold winter days as it really keeps my head warm and it has a pom-pom on top. I don't often take my phone on a run, but especially as winter clothes often have a little more pockets than summer clothes do, it's nice that you can put your TTC pass or your Presto card in the pocket, your phone, your keys, and maybe some change as well. This way, if you have to bail on your run, you have some sort of method to get home or buy something in a store. As well, during COVID time, it's nice you can put your mask in your pocket so you always have it just in case of an emergency or you have to jump in a store or just Uber or anything. One important thing to remember when you're going out for your winter run is to dress 10 degrees warmer than it actually is outside. I know it may be a little cold when you get outside initially, but once you get on your run, you're gonna warm up and you don't want to overheat and sweat and get chilled. So this is just a general rule of thumb when you're dressing for your winter run. It's still really important to hydrate on your runs even during the winter. You still sweat and lose water on your runs, you just may not notice as quickly or as much. If you're worried about the water freezing inside your bottle, you can take warm water instead. This way it also helps warm your insides and prevents it from freezing in your bottle. On a long run, I also like to put my gels inside of my mitten so it's next to my skin and I can just put it in here so it doesn't freeze. As I've had that happen before, I've been trying to turn the tap, especially on the endurance tap gels, and I literally just couldn't open it because my hands were too cold and the gel itself actually froze a little bit too. This is just not ideal on a long run when you need to fuel and you just can't open your gel or it's frozen. So you can put it inside your mitten or a pocket that's close to your skin so it stays warm and doesn't freeze. It's also a good idea, especially when it gets really cold outside, to put your watch on top of your base layer. This way, when you look at your watch, you don't have to pull your sweater up and have exposed skin. I know this will slightly mess with a heart monitor, but it might be worth it just so you don't have any exposed skin and any risk for frostbite. Visibility is everything. If cyclists or cars can't see you, they won't be looking for you. And especially as the days are shorter and it gets dark super early, you probably will be dark when you go for your run. So having lights on your arm, on the back of your sweater, is just so important. I talked about running lights in another video, so I'll have the link to that video you in the description below. Be adaptable. Sometimes you just have to change your run that day because it's too slippery outside to run safely and do speed workouts. If it's super slippery outside, it's not worth the risk of injury. If you fall down or if you have to brace yourself, it's just not good for your body. Sometimes winter running can just be about maintaining your fitness and just have to do those mileage rather than speed workouts all the time. You have to be flexible and smart about what runs you decide to do and sometimes it's just better to go for an easy run rather than just push it and fall down or just so many things could happen. It's better to go for a run than no run at all though. It's super important to take your wet clothes immediately off when you get home. This way you don't get chilled and possibly get sick. You can either jump in a warm shower or put dry, warm layers over top of you until you're kind of warmed up, then get a shower. Another good idea is to make sure that you warm up and activate before your run. It doesn't feel quite as cold out if your muscles are already warm, and I always find it takes me a little bit longer to get going on my run, especially if it's cold out. So if your muscles are already kind of warmed up and activated, it won't take as long when you get outside. And also, I don't know, I feel like there's more risk of pulling a muscle if you're cold and it's cold outside and you fall or just have to brace yourself. There's just kind of these risks that I'd rather just warm up and avoid them. It's also just important to cool down after your run, make sure your heart rate's lowered and that you do some post-run stretches. You can run all year long, it's just about having the right gear that will make it easier and just more enjoyable. If you have the stuff already, all you have to do is just throw it on and go for your run and not worry about it. I personally believe you become a stronger runner by running in the winter because you have to battle with the weather and then when summer comes around or even spring, you just feel so much freer when you can take all these layers off and the weather's just not terrible outside. All these layers almost feel like resistance training. You just like, you run in these layers and then you feel so much faster and freer when you take them off. I hope my tips for winter running is useful and helps you give some ideas or some inspiration of what to wear and just not to be scared of winter running. I know it can be really daunting 
daunting, especially if the weather is brutal outside. But if you, if you have the right gear, it's not as bad. Do you have any tips for winter running? Please share them in a comment below. I'd love to hear them. As always, if you like this video, tap that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Happy winter running and I'll see you next time.